The day before was an even bigger disaster than you thought. Devs reportedly made to pay fines for bad work, learned it was an MMO from the trailers, and no one's sure where the bosses are. Imagine if you had to pay fines for, for bugs. Like, we're all devs here. That's crazy. I would, I would get paid negative dollars. It don't matter about how much fang money you got. I get negative dollars. All right, anyways. All right. A new documentary from a German game site, Game 2 and GameStar, has shed some more light on the disastrous development of the day before. And boy, howdy, it's worse than you thought. Game 2 says it spoke to 16 former uh, Fantastic employees, and one of its former volunteers, and seven staff the day before publisher uh, Montana, Montana, Montana. The picture they paint is staggering. Do we get a percentage of the company revenue if we pay for bugs? That's a great question. I think that's a, I, you know what? I think that's a good proposal. I will pay for my bugs if I get a percentage of your revenue. I think that's perfectly fair because that means I'm taking on risk, right? We make devs pay for bugs. They don't get any billable work until they fix the bugs in their work. Wait, what? I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think that's good at all. They also get paid more if they get more done. I don't know if I, I don't, I don't think I like that. The reason being is the reason why I don't like that is that the reality is, is that we have a small perspectives and how things are used in production versus when they're used here. Uh, I just don't, I, 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 I don't, I mean, I, if you say it's been done for eight years, I don't think it makes that better, right? There's plenty of things that have been done for a long time that doesn't make it good or bad. Duration of things being done, right? I, I, you know, the Lindy effect, right? They love it. No turnover. Doubt. I'm doubting. Hard doubting right now. Okay, anyways. Speaking anonymously, Game 2's source alleges that working at Fantastic the day before now defunct development studio was pure megalomaniacal, megalomaniacal uh, chaos. As they tell it, the game's developer was development was constantly buffeted by the changing whims of the Gotovsev brothers, the studio's founders, and the scope and style of the game would change whenever one of them got their hands on whatever the big game of the month was that's like this is like software development 101 you gotta like come up with what you want to build and build the thing like i mean i understand pivots are important and there are times you want to pivot but man every time you pivot you should just consider that the likelihood of your project being successful just like got cut in half agile do see so do agile do say so i mean this sounds very agile right they're they're, they're planning they, they were planning two weeks at a time you know what i mean imagine the abstractions dude it would get crazy it'd get crazy it would get crazy sounds like the development of js yeah coming to work on a shooter one day the next day a mobile game all of a sudden next day it's an mmo boys we got mmo elden ring i want dodge mechanics Sources allege that the game's character creator had to be overhauled multiple times to keep up with GTA Online, then Hogwarts Legacy, then Baldur's Gate 3, while the game's settings, a smoky, oppressive city, had to be dramatically altered to become brighter and friendlier after one of the brothers played Spider-Man 2. Imagine, just for a second, everybody, imagine you're just sweating and you're designing for just weeks and months and crunch time and just getting after it and fucking toby mcguire spider-man comes rolling into your office and they're just like we gotta change everything we gotta change everything because this just ain't qu dude i don't know if you know this i don't know if you know about my boy toby over here i know toby mcguire's not in spider-man anymore but it's just funny it's just funny to think toby okay oh my goodness this, it's just too funny this is just it's crazy one former dev said they only learned the game was supposed to be an MMO when they saw a trailer for it. <sighs> I mean, that's a genre. Like, how do you not even know what the genre is? But that pales in comparison to the reports about how the game staff were treated. Fantastic has already drawn criticism for its use of volunteer workers on its project. What? How do you get someone to volunteer? But some of the details alleged by former staff are mind-boggling. Fantastic is said to have made use of a great deal of young, inexperienced labor drawn from its home base of Yakutsk, uh, as well as other countries in the former USSR. Very USSR behavior right here going on. Uh, like uh, Kazakhstan and uh, 
Ar- Armenia. Workers, in other words, with no other options. Dang. Sources says there was a great deal of voluntary unpaid overtime and months of crunch. One says they found myself begging for a few hours break just to find time for a shower or a meal. I mean, the game industry has historically been known as being one of the hardest, you know, industries to really be a part of. But I'm a little bit surprised, or I guess I I shouldn't be surprised that uh, former USSR... (laughs) Somehow made it worse. Um, This is actually wild that I can't imagine being in a situation where I'm voluntold to do things and, like, I have no options, especially if they had to move, like, cities or countries to get somewhere and they're, like, stuck in a place in which they don't – maybe they don't even speak the native language of the place that they're in. Uh, You know, like, this is effectively technical slavery of some sort. I mean, I don't like to – Toss out such foul accusations easily, but I don't see how any other ways to do this. That's crazy. Never work for a Ruski. Never work for a Ruski. Man, one claim backed up by several Game 2 sources says that the employees were made to pay fines uh, to the company for turning in uh, substandard work, with uh, some reportedly forced to pay $1,900 for poor uh, poor quality voice recordings. Others were kept on their toes by a company policy of spontaneous termination. One... What? spontaneous termination is that a medical disease what what is spontaneous a spontaneously terminated uh one of the day before's five testers was apparently fired from the company just before release after one of the uh gotovsevs encountered a bug i feel like uh the go-to brothers considered harmful of course uh you know there's some there's something magical about the fact that they have the word go-to in their name And they also being a disaster. But it sounds like... I feel like the only just punishment is that they have to learn to program and do it voluntarily and then have to get fined and they have to do it and they have to beg for showers. I feel like... like, How are these people held accountable for anything? Because let's just say all this is true, right? Do they... like? Are these people in some sort of are they actually going to get in some sort of trouble? I don't know the, I don't know the story of 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 the the founders, but this is just wild. Like imagine that you actually you have to kind of think about this that I I think everybody's capable of of quite a bit of evil, right? Um you know, and I always worry about like the people that I really really look up to and what what happens when what they're doing gets exposed. Like right now, like the doc, right? He's building a, a, a game studio right now. The thing that I just don't want to hear, and I'm, I'm just hoping it never happens, is that the doc comes out and it turns out he's like just a horrifying boss and he, and he runs a terrible studio, right? Like that's, honestly, I know that sounds crazy, but I think about that kind of stuff like, because I, I want him to be awesome. I want... Not the doc, man. I know. I, I, I just want to believe. He pees sitting down. Okay, okay that's rude. That's rude. Let's not just make uh, unabashed claims like that. Um, never meet your heroes, kids. I know. But you just have to think about, like, what does it take for somebody to get into this position? Right? What does it take for you to become this person? Because you had to, you had to think that these people didn't start off like this. Right? Like, and what do you do that is leading you down this path? Does that make sense? Because how many people, how many people as they, you know, as you start rising, you start doing all these things, your expectations of people kind of rise with your ability? You know, I think I think it's very easy to look at somebody and just see the evil in them and to pretend like you got none of it yourself. You know what I mean? 
I don't know. Uh, as for the the go tos themselves, uh, it seems no one quite knows where they've ended up in the aftermath of Fantastic's closure. The pair went AWOL around the game's launch, a fact that several staff attribute to foreknowledge that the game was in a dire state. The only and only reappeared to shutter the studio via Microsoft Teams. Several of Game Two sources believe that the pair has started from scratch a new studio making mobile games, but it remains unclear which one, if that's even the case. Dang. Uh, the day before was one of the last uh, year's most uh, utterly chaotic launches, managing as it did to build anticipation and get a huge number of pre-orders. On the back of the footage and promises that we know, uh, we now know we're hiding the true state of the game. You know, like, I remember, I, you know, before I went to Netflix, I worked at a place called Web Filings that's now known as Workiva, and the team I was on, it was fairly chaotic. I was doing like 70 hours every single week flying out to Arizona monthly doing code jams, right? And it was hard. And it was like not a, like it was not a, like, I look back on it still fondly in the sense that it was one of the times that I grew the most as a, as, as a developer. And it really enabled me to be more successful. But I still at the exact same time think about that as like, how do I want to say this? Because these people got forced into a situation whereas I got to opt into it. Now, if you get to opt into something, you get paid well enough, you get paid to it at a price that you agree to, and you have to do some hard work for a little bit, I will say that it's one of the most beneficial things I've ever done for me personally in my career. Um, you know, I agreed to the work, I did the work, and when I was tired of doing it, I did find a different job and, 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 and moved on with my life. Uh, but it was extremely beneficial for me. But 70 hours, that's 14 hours a, day, uh, hours a weekday. Yeah, it, well, I worked on the weekends too. But it didn't suck that much, right? Yeah, it didn't suck that much. The thing is, is that I had, you know, it was also a pleasant, you know, there's a lot of things that were pleasant about it. Um, I definitely wasn't paid that well, for sure. Uh, for the work I was doing, I definitely wasn't paid that well. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it really made me the developer I am. So when I hear, you know, when I hear people being allergic to having to work really hard, you know, I think that you also miss out on some things that just can only come with experience. And it's really hard to get experience if you're just not putting in entirely too many hours, Right? Uh, you work a weekend for Netflix? No, I don't. I mean, I, there, there's been times I have, right? But these people's situations obviously have up. I mean, volunteer, volunteering somebody and effectively what sounds like some form of weird, like, slavery of being in a city they may not speak even the language of and being forced to do things. That, I mean, that's crazy. Uh, do 70 hours a week on building site. That's, uh, that's hard work. It is. It, it, it's hard work. Uh, before the launch, the game faced uh, severe delays after baffling argument with a calendar app and didn't do much to ass assuage anyone's fears when, it first, uh, when its first gameplay demo looked almost uh, determinedly generic. When it launched, it met predictable mockery and scorn, only for Fantastic to close its doors four days later. The game itself has now been extricated uh, or ex extracted from existence. The remains of the studio's management have since blamed its poor performance on hate campaign by bloggers. Classic, really. It's really the bloggers' fault that it's it's that that's really what caused the problem. If if that sounds astonishing, you haven't heard half of it. It's worth going and checking out the Game Two's full documentary on YouTube. It's in German, but has English subtitles to get the full picture of just how messy and chaotic. Last year's messiest, most chaotic game really was. <sighs> I knew game dev has a lot of problems, but that's wild. I've never heard of anything like this. What game? The day before. It was depressing. I just have a hard like I I, I have the, the problem I have is I just have a hard time I just have a like a hard time of putting my mind like my my head in this mindset where you'd want to do that to anybody. Or where you'd see that's the only way to progress forward in something. I mean it just sounds like I mean I feel bad for anybody that has you know, like, in some sense, a lot of people experience some very extremely mild version of this. If you've ever worked for any product manager slash company that constantly changes which direction you're going i mean that alone is just so difficult i don't know if you've ever been in in a scope change uh 
scope change plays, but it's really, really hard. And it's not... Uh, and it's not just hard because... Like, the problem isn't that you're just working on new stuff. It's just that you can never actually build anything, right? Everything's just, like, rebuilding constantly without actually ever getting anywhere. I hate having to wait for corporations to write games and software because the little guy won't get out of bed. <laughs> what? I don't... I don't... There must be some sort of joke that I'm missing on the other end of this one. Play something, Saxman. Uh, hey, that's why we're agile. Uh, you need to finish something or else you'll feel like doo-doo. Yeah. Constant refactors are a grind. Yeah, dude, I am not a fan of refactoring. Like, generally, I try to stay away from it if I can. Uh, just because it is... It is really hard. I think indie games uh, doing better is a sign people don't want expensive uh, s sightseeing interactive movies. They just want simple, fun ones. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, that's probably true. Uh, the little guys are too busy racing NeoVim to make games. I think uh, the other problem is, is that people are also, um, the problem with AAA games is that there's an ever larger and growing desire, Right. Uh, for more and more fantastic. Whereas with indie games, that same expectation is just not there. You know, like when you play an indie game, when I download a when I download a, a simple game, I just don't I don't have nearly the same expectations that I do of a AAA game. Like if I'm going to go play another like RPG, like kind of like an offline RPG, like I'm coming in there with with Elden Ring expectations. Like, I'm going to need a finished-ass game that's absolutely incredible. And if it's not incredible, I'm just going to be like, ah, oh, this game this doesn't even feel cool at all, right? Like, even if, like, go play even, like, even some of the older Halos don't feel as good. Boulder's Gate 3 was incredible. But I just, uh, you know... Like, when I go play Turok, Turok was a triple-A game of the most amazing game category. And now it feels, like, clunky. Like, eh. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, if like, even this, even Halo 1. Go play through the Halo 1 campaign, and it starts to get kind of, like, really repetitive. You know? And that's Perfect Dark. Perfect Dark was so dang much fun. I played thousands of multiplayers of Perfect Dark. And that was one of the biggest games out there. And yet that, you know, like that's the problem about AAA games is that they they age differently. You know, they just, they do truly just age differently. And maybe it's just the 3D nature of the whole thing. I don't know. Perfect Dark was just a reskin of GoldenEye too. It, it was a reskin of GoldenEye, but it was more, there was a lot more to it. Games made by id still hold up. Yeah, id's really good. I don't know if I don't know if AAA games aren't games anymore. They're still very much so games. It's just that now the requirement to be able to tell a story has grown so much. I mean, but at the end of the day, games or no games, or story or no story, the day before was the greatest fumble of all time. People want a zombie RPG shooter, Dark City feel. Like that would be fun. That would be a lot of fun to play. I think a lot of people would enjoy such an experience. But man, it just, I mean, this also just goes to show how much does management like F these things. If you don't have a clear vision of what you're building, because I know a lot of you are trying to start do startups and all that. I know a lot of you want to be able to build your own company and all that. This should be the greatest and most clearest indicator of come up with a direction. Make sure you think the direction's the right direction. And, like, commit to it long enough to see something through. You know, because if, you're, if, if your inspiration changes by the wind of every new product that's coming out, you're not, you're never going to be successful. Now, you may never turn into this. You may do this to yourself in some sort of sense where you're just programming nonstop to try to keep on, you know, keep on pushing through everything. But at the end of the day, you're never going to be successful. You just can't do that. I don't want a company. I want to write code. Well, at some point, you got to do something with your code. You know what I mean? You still got to do something with your code. 
I'm working on a SAS, yeah. All right, anyways, I thought this was really interesting. I feel really bad for all the developers involved in this and everybody involved with this, and I sure hope that the uh, that uh, the, the go-to brothers, uh, that I, I, I surely hope that they somehow find themselves in a good old-fashioned uh, prison for, for such things. Um, and it also just really goes to show that I think a lot of us, you know, you know, America has obviously really great software and dev culture, if you will. And I know, you know, the pay is very good. And then as you go to other places around the world, the pay is not as good, but still it's, 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 it's fine, I guess. Uh, but man, it can get really bad. You know, even the things that we enjoy, the, ho the hobbies we get to enjoy, uh, the programming. Programming is literally a hobby that we get, get, get to get paid for. It can be terrible. So if, you, if, if you're not in this, you know, just remember, just, you know, I know that remember somebody else has it worse is always like not a really great way to be motivated. But it is... I mean, for me, it's, it, it kind of puts a sobriety in my head that there is – that when I'm not feeling thankful, I got to remember just how good I do have it and try to, like, recount the things that I think are actually really good and be happy about it. You know what I mean? And even though it's, it's not easy to do, there's a lot of – some good stuff out there. And you got to, you know – it's good to it's good it's good to be able to remember the blessings you have and to count them because I mean you could be someone that's in a a country you're not from not being able to speak the language you're speaking and begging just to have enough time to eat and take a shower and that's after a gen.